Saturday, March 6, 2021, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at something that I've been saying was going to happen in the futures or paper market as it pertains to gold. Uh, the fact that uh, the bullion banks or the swaps uh, category, as they're called, are actually covering a huge short position. Yes, we, we've been hearing that gold has been going down or the paper price has been going down because 10-year yield is uh, rising. And that's that has shaken off uh, a, a lot of the hedge funds, uh, the managed money, as it's called. Uh, a lot of times these people, uh, hedge funds, because of legal uh, constraints, they cannot buy physical gold and store physical gold. So they, they go for the paper gold. They never take delivery. So they get shaken out by the bullion banks. So if the bullion banks didn't really believe we had an inflation problem and that the rising yields don't necessarily mean uh, lower commodity uh, prices or lower gold and silver prices, they wouldn't be short covering. And that's what I'm going to explain today. What is short covering? What it means uh, to some of us? It may sound very uh, normal, something that we understand. But for a lot of uh, the people on the channel, uh, they're not aware of all these uh, t uh, of all this terminology. And before I go forward uh, w with looking at what happened uh, last week in terms of the futures, I like to uh, thank all the new viewers, all the new subscribers and all the existing viewers and subscribers, uh, of course, as I said, uh, a week or two ago the community is growing and that's really good i have people from all walks of life <laughs> yes i did work in the city of london for 20 years which is the uh, equivalent of wall street in the u.s and uh my uh purpose uh in creating this channel was to wake up uh, or inform the people about the fraudulent nature of our monetary system uh, and how we need to go uh, back to uh, some kind of sound money system because the current system we're in only favors a few people at the top at the expense of the general public. So yeah, the kind of people that I get, I can tell you, are from all walks of life. As I said, I even get people who, who are still on Wall Street or are in the city of London. I, I get a plumber f from somewhere. I, I get people from all over the world. I, I got a message the other day from someone who said uh, they were in the south of Chile in Patagonia. I've got people in um, Hong Kong, uh, Japan, uh, everywhere around the world. So uh, I'd like to thank again all the interest in what I have to say. <laughs> I didn't expect when I started the channel just over five years ago that uh, it would grow as much as it has. So uh, one more thing, sound money. Um, yes, very important. I'm going to give you a list of uh, uh, people who I think were uh, very important in exposing the Federal Reserve and the fraudulent nature of central banking and fiat currency. And I'm not going to go over them in detail. I've done that before. I might do it in the future. But these would be men. And uh, there's no women on the list. I'm sorry. But they're just men at the moment. Uh, that uh, if I had a choice, someone came up to me. Oh, you can have uh, a nice dinner with a group of people from any time um, in history. And you'd sit down with them and chat for hours. Well, these would be uh, the men that I'd choose. So the first one is um, Lewis uh, Thomas McFadden. So he was a Republican member of the U.S. House of Representatives, and he was very critical of the Federal Reserve. He made the speech about the Federal Reserve. So Lewis T. McFadden. Uh, the other one you might have heard of his son, uh, Charles Lindbergh Jr., the aviator. Well, his father was Charles Lindbergh Sr. He was very critical of the whole system. He said, this Federal Reserve Act establishes the most gigantic trust on earth. When the president 
Woodrow Wilson signs this bill, the invisible government of the monetary power will be legalized. The worst legislative crime of the ages is perpetrated by this banking and currency bill. And it's ironic that his son actually married uh, the daughter of a JP Morgan partner. So there you go. Uh, the other one, of course, uh, he's still alive. So I, I, I could still go out for dinner with him. He's actually uh, been interviewed here on the channel. It's Congressman Ron Paul, of course, who came up with the slogan, or his followers did, his supporters during a presidential campaign started saying, end the Fed, right? So that, that's Ron Paul. The other one, he's written uh, The Creature from Jekyll Island about the Federal Reserve, G. Edward Griffin. And actually, the uh, pioneers also uh, outside, let's say, Congress, uh, outside the political system, I would say uh, I'd have to go with Ezra Pound. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of uh, criticism about uh, uh, Ezra Pound during World War II, but be, be as it may, he was a famous uh, poet, of course, American poet. He was also a political prisoner <laughs> during World War II. But as a, as a pound pushed Eustace Mullins, uh, who also wrote uh, even before G. Edward Griffin about the origins of the Federal Reserve. So Eustace Mullins was a young uh, reporter, a writer, and he met Ezra Pound, and Ezra Pound encouraged him to go to the Library of Congress and look into the Federal Reserve. Uh, there's a couple of more. Um, these these two are central bankers. One of them is passed on, John Exter. I've spoken a lot about John Exter. And the other one you might find strange that I'd have him at dinner or for dinner, uh, Alan Greenspan, even though he was a... Uh, chairman of the board. He started this everything bubble with the interventions uh, starting back in 87 with the crash, right? He, he uh, flooded the market with easy money and he kept doing that uh, for as long as he's, he was chairman of the Federal Reserve. But I, I think he uh, helped uh, spread uh, awareness of sound money with his uh, essay from 1966, uh, Gold and Economic Freedom. And uh, I met Ron Paul uh, back in 2002 at the Mises Institute, and we spoke about Greenspan and his essay. And Ron Paul said that uh, Greenspan told him uh, when he used to go testify to Congress, and uh, they used to have uh, conversations that he still believed in the message of sound money, Alan Greenspan. So there you go. That's why I would invite him to. So now <laughs> to the gold futures market. And, and I've been saying this uh, the last few weeks that uh, the bullion banks are always, ha they always have a massive short position regularly. They're, they're always the, the big short in paper gold uh, most of the time. Yes, they do cover a, a lot of times. And I said, uh, they must be worried because, and this was two, three weeks ago, because all the commodities were breaking out, yields were going up. It wasn't a sign of reflation. <laughs> That's what Wall Street uh, wants uh, the hedge funds to believe that gold is uh, no good in the reflation, that uh, rising yields are never good for gold, <laughs> like they were in the 70s. So, um, that was the game game plan, and you would think that uh, the the bankers, uh, bullion banks, would be shorting gold as well because uh, all all the uh, conditions, according to them, are there for a bearish price of gold. And I think what's happened in the last few weeks to the price of gold, uh, not so much silver because. Silver still holding relatively well, I would I would say. We're still above that key 21 level that we broke out of last year that uh, took silver almost straight to 30. Uh, so I think gold is underperforming. And uh, yes, is it any wonder that there is such a shortage of physical gold and silver? Because uh, the big 
uh, money out there, not hedge funds, uh, big investors, people who see what's coming in terms of inflation. They want the real thing. And that's why the premiums are still uh, so high for gold and silver. And uh, the, the bullion banks basically are trying to extricate themselves from a huge short position because they know where we're going. So uh, there's a good article uh, overnight from King World News. Bullion banks cover massive amount of gold shorts. So uh, he had uh, Alistair McLeod from London as well on and uh, he, he follows these uh, commitment of traders uh, report or the caught report very closely. Uh, they are the commitment of traders uh, in any futures contract that is uh, compiled by the CFTC. <laughs> uh, you know, the CFTC is the regulator of the futures market. The thing is, uh, the report comes out Friday, yesterday, after the close of the market. But it, it just covers the period up until Tuesday last week. So we don't know what's happened uh, from Wednesday to yesterday and uh, we're only going to find out what happened from Wednesday to yesterday and uh, let's say next Tuesday on on Friday of the next week so they could have covered even more and what does covering mean well in uh, futures terminology and I was a futures and options broker for 20 years uh, my uh, specialty was not precious metals. I, I was a bond guy. <laughs> I used to be a government bond futures broker and options as well. So when you go along a future, you uh, basically uh, buy the contract to take delivery in the future at a certain price. And I have to say, you don't usually take delivery even in the bond futures. Uh, and... Uh, the person who is on the other side of that long contract you, you bought your long let's say gold is the person that's short they're selling you uh, the contract they're supposed to deliver to you let's say in a month two month or three months uh, the, the underlying commodity or instrument of the contract so yes so there are longs and shorts and as i said the bullion banks most of the time have huge short positions and uh when you cover a short you have to buy buy the contract back uh so you don't go long but you you, you take a long position to basically neutralize the short position so that's what they're doing but they are buying um buying the uh the futures so we'll, we'll go through this uh article here see what uh, Alistair McLeod is saying tonight's commitment of traders report that was last night confirms what we guessed that the swaps bullion banks trading desks clawed back a massive 23,351 net shorts reducing their outstanding position to 135,308 contracts the monetary effect is shown in our next chart uh, net shorts are now in the hole for 23 billion, down from 42 billion in January. So that that means that uh, they were losing 42 billion with with their position. So you can understand why they couldn't let gold and silver <laughs> go up because uh, it could bring down the whole banking system. So they they've almost halved this exposure or uh, losing position. Uh, from being short gold they'll probably tell you that uh, they're hedged but they always do <laughs> why would they be short covering if they're hedged they, they they wouldn't have to worry about it right so what else does it say this is important uh, because so long as uh, the bullion banks are trapped in these inflationary times they cannot permit the gold price to run away. <laughs> Instead, they have done a good psychological job to get the managed money category on the run, hedge funds. These are the hedge funds who almost never take delivery. So here's the chart. Since last Tuesday, 
uh, the date of the caught report doubtless there net longs have reduced even more that's the uh, hedge funds perhaps to 25,000 the reason they will have sold so heavily is a combination of charts with bearish moving averages and soaring bond yields the 10-year US Treasury has shocked us all up up next so this is what uh, Alistair McLeod is saying uh, next week we will likely see continued attempts by bullion banks to close down more shorts meanwhile the Fed seems reluctant to implement uh, yield curve control and to extend relief from the supplementary liquidity ratio or SLR which penalizes banks extending their balance sheet to accommodate bond holdings this is due to expire at the end of this month. The banks are calling uh, the Fed out on this. Uh, the shorts in the U.S. Treasury market have driven repo uh, rates to minus four and a quarter. I spoke about this yesterday in my video in the scramble for deliverable bonds. If the Fed doesn't capitulate on these issues, uh, there will be a, a banking crisis, not just in the U.S., but in the Eurozone, where bond yields are also rising sharply. If the Fed does capitulate, it is game on for hyperinflation. So there you go. Uh, damned if they don't, damned if they do. For gold and silver, these are extremely volatile conditions. But by default, owning physical is the only place to be, as I've said many times. I agree completely with that. You have to be in the physical market. Uh, yes, uh, try not to extend yourself uh, too much into physical silver and gold and by that i mean if you're not comfortable with the volatility in the paper price yes keep some uh, fiat currency aside uh, don't go all in if, if you're just starting to buy gold and silver try to a uh, dollar cost average uh, and just to give you an example yesterday i, I found from my uh, coin and metal dealer in bromley uh, he had some uh, one ounce silver coins. So I was able to buy here in the UK 10 one ounce silver coins for 27 pounds. So I thought that was a good deal. Uh, you can look him up if you want. Uh, he, he's going to be uh, probably annoyed with me because the last time I did that, he, got, he was really busy. He's already very busy. But yes, it's Peter Morris in Bromley, coin and metal dealer, if you want to look him up. I don't know if he still has any uh, silver left. And usually his prices are good because he, he doesn't keep stock. The only stock he has is when people sell it to him. So he's able to make you a, a better price. He's not really a, a bullion dealer. He's a coin and metal dealer. So yeah, he's talking about the banks, Alistair McLeod. And I, I found it interesting that uh, the banks are desperate now for, for the Federal Reserve to... Uh, stop this uh, this bear market uh, nascent bear market in the bonds for, uh, for because they're exposed to a lot of bond but they have huge bond positions so it's not surprising that yesterday uh, one bank came out it was Bank of America and they said the Fed will inevitably move to yield curve control as rates uh, are no longer anchored so they want the Fed to step step in and manipulate the market but as Alistair McLeod said that that is just gonna be even more hyperinflationary so what about the uh, stock market yesterday <laughs> what do I think of the uh, move in the stock market well I commented through a tweet before actually some other stories started coming out that I thought it was intervention by the plunge protection team or the exchange stabilization fund um, yes, because with the strong jobs data yesterday, you would have expected uh, the stock market to have dropped even more and bond yields to have gone up even more. And they did right after the number. We saw the 10-year yield go to around 163 and we saw the stock markets under pressure. But then everything turned. We saw the 10-year yield go back down to like 155 and we saw the Dow up hundreds of points. I think it was 500 or, or even 600. I, I haven't got the data here, but uh, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> it, it looks like they're desperate. 
Yes, it's tough. It's financial war, really, uh, to be honest. And uh, don't get shaken off like the hedge funds. Well, they didn't even get shaken off from real physical gold and silver. They're in the speculative paper game. The The next key key date, I think, is uh, March 15th, March 16th. That's the, the next Fed meeting. The market is definitely going to be expecting something about uh, the Treasury yields from the Federal Reserve. So there you go. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great weekend. Take care. Bye.